and I know you love him. And that's what we are talking about tonight. And I pray that the power of his love will work in every life tonight in Jesus' name. We appreciate uh, people who are coming for the first time. We love you and God loves you more. I will believe that tonight has to come with us. It will not be your last time. You will keep coming. And the love of God will enrich and empower your life in Jesus' name. And all our members, all our workers, all our leaders who are here, the love of God will never fail in your life. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight for our Bible study. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Thank you for their faithfulness. Our overseers, our leaders, our pastors, our workers, our members, and our, our newcomers. Lord, we pray tonight, you enlighten us in your word in Jesus' name. Put something in every heart. Do something in every life. That none of us will ever remain the same again in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Abuja Church, amen. God has blessed you already. You can sit down. We're coming to John chapter 21. And tonight we're looking at verses 15, 16, and 17. Open your Bible with me. John chapter 21. Reading from verse 15. So, when they had died, Jesus says unto Simon, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my lambs. He says to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my sheep. He says unto him, The third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus says unto him, Feed my sheep. You will see here that Jesus Christ was talking about love. He looked at Simon, son of Jonas, that's Simon Peter, and he asked him a question. A question he repeated three times, one form or the other. And as he said it for the first time, he said, Lovest thou me? And remember, this was after he had prepared food for them, the risen Christ, righteous Christ. Royal Christ, the reigning Christ, had prepared the food for them. And after they died, he asked the question, Simon. And then as he asked him, he was asking the others also, Lovest thou me more? Think about that. There are many people that think we love Christ, full stop. As for loving him more, I don't understand that. I thought if you really love, you love. And to say that there is a superlative, there is a higher thing, and there is a higher grade of loving that one, many people do not know. But Jesus Christ was saying, Lovest thou me more than these? Come to Luke chapter 7. In Luke chapter 7, verse 40. Jesus answering says unto him, Simon, another Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he that Simon saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor 
which had two debtors the one owed 500 pence and the other 50 understand now two creditors and these two credit debtors were both debtors one owed only 50 the other one owed 500 and when they had nothing to pay he frankly forgave them both tell me therefore which of them will love him most there is loving there is loving more there is loving most and as you see here these two debtors one having a great debt and the other one having a moderate debt and they were both forgiven and now the lord jesus christ was asking which one do you think will love most simon answered and said i suppose he to whom he forgave most and he said thou as rightly judged and then he goes on but you understand the point we can love him moderately we can love him more and then we can love him most when you think about it look at peter the lord had called him you ought to love god you ought to love christ the lord had made him an apostle you ought to love christ you ought to love him very well not only that he had walked on the water and not only that he had given him the first position anytime you read the list of the apostles peter always comes first he ought to love christ and now he denied the lord and he went away from the lord and he went bitterly when he repented but is there any hope because jesus had said whosoever will deny me before men i will deny him before the angels of god i'll deny him before my father and when he rose up from the dead he said go and tell my disciples and peter for he fell he was restored and jesus is saying when you are saved you love god you went back i restored you you must love more and now you said i go a fishing and you have been at the seaside you caught nothing and i said throw your net there and you caught 153 pieces do you love me more because of what i have done there is loving christ more you love him but then you see what he has done for you and you love him more we're coming to second samuel chapter 1 second samuel chapter 1 and i'm reading from verse 26 here is the lamentation of david when he heard that jonathan died you understand jonathan jonathan was a friend a companion to david not only that the father of jonathan saul told him if david is alive you will not reign the throne will be given to David. Bring him out so that he will die. And Jonathan said, he will not die. I still love him. And I'm not going to compete with him. God has chosen him. He is going to be the king. And then they were in the field. And Jonathan removed his coat, his spear, everything that identified him as the one to become king. He transferred it over unto david and he said you will reign i'm willing to be your assistant i'm willing to follow you i will not compete with you now you understand after jonathan died on the on the battlefield look at this chapter 1 verse 26 of second samuel i am distressed for thee my brother jonathan very pleasant as thou been unto me thy love to me is was wonderful passing going beyond the love of women he said i've never found a person like this before that will give up all his right that will give up everything he had your love for me is more than the love of any woman of all women so you understand there is loving god more there's loving christ more number one he saved you 
and then you love him number two he said don't go yet i will sanctify you all at the cost of his sacrifice he saves your love he sanctified your love more he healed you and took away all your infirmities bless the lord of my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name, who forgiveth all that iniquity, so healeth all the diseases. Keep on counting, he loves you more now. And now he said, I'm going to sanctify you. I'm going to give, you cannot be holy by yourself. I'm going to give it to you as a gift to prepare you for heaven. You must love him more. And then he said, I go to heaven. I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I am going to prepare that place for you. When I come back, I'm going to take you to myself so that where I am, there you will be. Of course, you will love him more. And then he said, I'm giving you an assignment. And this assignment, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. You will receive power. After the really ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, to the uttermost part of the earth. And he filled you with the Holy Ghost, saturated your life, baptized you, immersed you in the Holy Ghost. There is reason to love him more. And then he said, I'm going to heaven. I'll be thinking of you. I'm going to heaven. I'll be looking at the way you are. I'll be going to heaven and I will never leave you alone. I will be with you until the end of the world. You have cause to love him more. There is loving God. There's loving God more. We're coming back now to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. And it says in verse 15. John chapter 21, reading from verse 15, when they are dying, Jesus says unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? A specific now. Here we have fish on the ground. And Jesus could be pointing to the fish and he says, Well, you've been a fisherman. Here is success, here is gain, here is profit. Do you love me more than market? Do you love me more than money? Do you love me what these fish, pieces of fish, what they signify, what they symbolize? Do you love me more than these? And you have a question to answer to. The Lord is asking you with all that I've done for you. The way I've changed your life, the way I've transformed your life, do you love me more than these? Your own may not be fish. Your own may be rice that was selling. Your own may be market. Your own may be business. Your own may be the office work. Your own may be your salary. Your own may be the things of this world. Your own may be land, property, houses. Lovest thou me more than these? That's one question. There were other people there. Because when Peter said, I go a fishing, Thomas said, we we'll go with you. And then Nathaniel said, we we'll go with you. The other disciples, seven all together, they said, Peter, if you are going, what am I doing preaching? If Peter is going a fishing, what am I doing, do you know, working for God? If Peter is going a fishing, we we'll go with you. And Jesus now said, Peter, look at Thomas, look at all these people. Lovest thou me more than these? Are there people in your life that you are following once they say i go a fishing once they say i'm not going to serve the lord anymore and then you follow where is your love look at what he has done for you do you love him more than these that's the question he was asking peter and then peter replied and said lord you know that i love you and jesus said feed my lamb feed my sheep tonight we're looking at the word of god the foundation of love for acceptable service the foundation of love for acceptable service there are three things we're looking at number one the heart searching concern on our first love for christ the heart searching concern jesus had a concern not only that i just love you i love you he wants to know what kind of love do you love me more than all these things that you see around you number one they had searching concern on our first love for christ point number two they had felt consecration 
with fundamental loyalty to Christ. That's the response of Peter. He said, Yea, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know. What happened, happened. But you know, my heart, I love you. And then Jesus asked again, Peter, Simon Peter, Lovest thou me? He said, Yea, Lord, thou knowest. You know all things. Nothing can be hidden away from you. It's true I bragged and boasted before, and then self-confidence made me fall. And I'm where I am now because of discouragement. But you know, deep in my heart, thou knowest I love you. His consecration and his loyalty to Christ, the heartfelt consecration with fundamental loyalty to Christ. Number three, the heartwarming commitment to faithful labor for Christ. Feed my lamb, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. The heartwarming commitment to faithful labor for Christ. We're coming to point number one, and that's the heart searching concern on our first love for Christ. We're coming back to John chapter 21, verse 15. So when they are died, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? That's the question. And it's a heart searching question, heart searching concern that Jesus had. Come to verse 16. He says unto him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me come to verse 17 he says unto him the third time simon son of jonas lovest thou me for those of us who are reading the english bible or any other bible in a language in the nation we see love 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 but in the greek it's different in the greek there is supernatural love that God puts in our heart and it's called it's referred to as agape love there's another kind of love which is friendliness which is fellowship which is human number one this one is heavenly love agape number two there's phileo which is human love a mother loves the children and a father will love the children the parents will love their children human friends will love each other human and so when jesus first started and he said simon peter son of jonas lovest thou me he used the word agape with heavenly love supreme love supernatural love a kind of love that comes from the throne of god and comes to the heart of man when peter was going to answer he answered Ye Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He used another word, phileo. I love you. You've taken care of me. You gave me bread. You gave me fish. You gave me success. I love you. Like a friend would love his friend, phileo. This is human love. That's why Jesus Christ repeated the question again, Simon, son of Jonas. Lovest thou me? You know the kind of love I have for you. I went to the cross to die for you. That one is not phileo. And I gave my life and I spilled my blood. That one is not phileo. That one is not human love. This is love coming from above that God commendeth his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Peter still answered, yea lord yes lord i love you and i love you with this human love because you've been good to me i feel ashamed you know what i've done i feel ashamed i've gone back but i love you with phileo with human love and now the third time jesus now came down to his level and used that same word phileo all right this is now on the human level simon peter with everything i've given you with the chance opportunities i give you think about any human situation 
Do you love me with phileo, the human love in the real sense, with everything I sacrifice? And you are not even, it's like you're living in the house, you're not even paying your house rent. You're living in the house, you're not responding to everything I'm doing. You're living in the house, you're not even cleaning the house. Okay, let's talk about human love. Do you love me with phileo love, with human love? Then Peter broke down and said, Lord, thou knowest all things. There's no way I can express myself again. If I ever loved anybody, thou knowest that I love you. And Jesus said, okay, let's forget language. Let's forget higher grade, middle gauge, and uh, lower grade. You love me, feed my sheep. Go and demonstrate it. I'll be going back to heaven. And then as I go back to heaven, I have lambs, I have sheep, you will feed them. And when you do that constantly, you will show that you really love me. That's what the Lord was saying. Let's look at this concern. This kind of love comes to the heart when God deals with the original depravity in the heart. Deuteronomy chapter 30, we're looking at verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And we're reading from verse 6. This is how the, how the supernatural love of God will come in your heart, in my heart, in our heart. If anyone is going to love God, and is going to love God more than these, more than anyone on earth, more than anything on earth, this is how it will happen. Look at um, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. The Lord thy God will circumcise than heart there is uh, something in the heart which is an extra kind of flesh which is an extra kind of a disturbance that will not allow the free love the full love of god to be in the heart and therefore it will circumcise it will take that away and the heart of thy seed to love the lord thy god with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. There's a kind of love without reservation. There's a kind of love without interruption. There's a kind of love that is there and it is heavenly and it is holy and it is high. That kind of love, that's what Jesus was talking about. Lovest thou me? Is the heart so circumcised? Is the heart so cleansed that now you love me with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind? Matthew chapter 10. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus made it clear that there are levels of love. There are different kinds of love. You love your father, you love your mother. That's good, that's great, that's necessary. But your father, if your father was living a perfect life, a holy life, a righteous life, and he had been teaching you, my son, this is the way to go. My daughter, this is the way to go. And now, eventually, you didn't go that way. And then you were now charged to the court, and they found you guilty. And your father saw that it was your fault. You didn't go the right way. And now they said, because of what you have done, they're going to sentence you to life imprisonment. Your father is not likely to say, excuse me, release him, and let me serve the sentence of life imprisonment. Or if, for example, a child had done something, you know, and it's so terrible that they now said, this child is going to die. The court says the judgment is that he will pay the penalty, he will die. The father or the mother is not likely to come out and say, all right, my son is a young fellow. He's done that, and you've sentenced him to death. I'm going to take his place. Many people will not do that, but that's exactly what Jesus had done. God gave a commandment, you will not do this. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And Jesus came and took your place, and he died for you. Now that he died for you, and you know the agony on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me just because of you? He now says, because of what I've done for you, 
I died the death for you that father cannot die for you mother cannot die for you nobody can die for you therefore you love your father you have to love me more you love your mother you have to love me more Matthew chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 37 in Matthew chapter 10 verse 37 he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me you understand why because he died for us because he paid a penalty that nobody could pay he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me he wants more love he deserves more love I come to psalm 87 psalm 87 and we're looking at verse 2 psalm 87 verse 2 the lord is saying lovest thou me more the word more is what's important it's telling us in psalm 87 verse 2 the lord loveth the gates of zion more than all the dwellings of jacob you can see the difference here now there is the gate of zion there's the gate of the house of god there's the gate of worshiping the lord and then there are dwellings all over the city dwellings of the children of israel and when god looks at it that's a house that's a mansion it's a big house it's a glorious house but then he looks at his own sanctuary and he looks at his own as zion and he loves the gates of zion more above the dwellings of jacob let's now make the application if you say you love somebody and you hate to go to his house I love you so much but the point is my house is better than your house the restaurant is better than your house and the office is better than your house i love you i love you but i never think of coming to your house that's what the lord is talking about if you love the lord the house of god and the house of prayer the house of worship in the place where we exalt jesus christ and the words of jesus christ that's what you will love you will love the house of god i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of god the lord himself loves the gates of zion more than all the dwellings of jacob and if you are like the lord that's exactly what you are going to do you will love the house of god more and let's come to psalm 119 in Psalm 119, lovest thou me more than these? Psalm 119, we're looking at one, verse 127. In Psalm 127, therefore, I love thy commandment above gold, yea, above fine gold. You know, there are some people, they say they love the Lord, but there is uh, something that happens to them. They say they love the Lord, but gold, uh-uh, that one, Jesus, don't touch that area. I love the Lord, but I love my gold more than I love the Lord. There are treasures, treasures that I have, I keep them in the safe. And, uh, you know, whatever is coming on in the church and uh, they're making announcement, the house of the Lord must be built. We all pray and we all shout. And then the Lord reminds us and he says, that treasure in the same. If you love me more than these, bring those things out and let's uh, give, give that to serve me. And then we'll begin to struggle, Lord. Uh, I love you, but we're not talking about that other one. I, do, I can't touch that one at all. That's the evidence we don't love him more than all those things, than the commandments of God. Here is the commandment of God. We've been walking this way habitually going this direction and now the word of god comes to us and it says this is the way to walk walk he in it and we still continue in the old way that means we don't love him as much as we thought we loved him he says therefore i love thy commandments above gold yea above fine gold he says therefore in verse 128 I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. I hate every false way. 
Let's come to Psalm 138. Psalm 138, we're looking at verse 2. Psalm 138, verse 2, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for, that, for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Look at this now. For thou as exalted thou as magnified thy word tell me above all thy name look at look at that here is the name of god and there are people when they pray they know the names of god and they say it's jehovah jireh it's jehovah rafa it's jehovah Ra, it's jehovah Sidkenu. and then they say it's the ancient of this it's the land of the tribe of judah and you keep on mentioning the name of god that's good but then uh, the word of god comes to them here is something uh, the lord does not appreciate turn away from that they will not turn away from that they do not have the love for the word of God above the name of God. And here God himself says, he has exalted, he has magnified his word above all his name. That's what the Lord is saying. It's not just mentioning the name of God. It's not just mentioning the titles of Christ. It's not just saying Christ is this, Lord of Lord, Master, and all that. And from A to Z, he is Alpha, he is Omega, he is this and that. I about his word. Lovest thou me more than these? He wants to know whether you love his word with all your heart and with all your soul. We're looking at uh, Songs of Solomon. In Songs of Solomon, chapter 8. Songs of Solomon, chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 6. Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse. Tell me the verse we're looking for verse 6 look at verse 6 it says set me as a seal upon thine heart as a seal upon thine arm for love is stronger as death love is stronger as death that means that's what jesus is saying simon son of jonas lovest thou me more than these a kind of love that is so strong that even if death came because of your loyalty to christ and because of devotion to christ you say yes i can take that because love is as strong as death jealousy is cruel as the grave and the, the cause of fire the cause thereof a cause of fire which has a most vehement flame many waters cannot quench love many waters cannot quench love peter simon peter son of jonas what are you doing here is this your love is this all your love which kind of water of affliction or water of frustration or the water of adversity that came on you and you dragged all these people away from what i told them to do i go a fishing is it because of discouragement is it because of suffering ah if there is real love more love the one we're talking about agape love supernatural love heavenly love it says many waters cannot quench love and the lord is asking us today what will separate you from the love of christ what is it that comes at your life comes in your family the persecution the misunderstanding and then everything you promise you are going to do for the lord before now you've abandoned that i will call you my brother what's the matter well you know the one that was uh, running at a very high speed before running in the way of the direction of the kingdom of god and now you have slowed down and now you are even stopping and now you are even backtracking many waters cannot quench love ask yourself what's happening today the love you had when you were first born again the love you had when you were first sanctified the love you had when you first came to the church and you say i will love the lord persecution does you really will feel the pain of persecution because of that love many waters cannot quench love neither can the floods drown it if a man would give all the substance of his house for love it would utterly be contempt 
there are people now scholarship comes to take you to a place where you not hear the word of god they love the scholarship more than the study of the word of god a situation comes and somebody says can i have your hand in marriage and we're so desperate looking for how to get married that the love of god will push all that aside that's what the lord is asking is saying lovest thou me more than all these do you love me more than gain and more than profit do you love me more than possession and more than pleasure do you love me more than success and more than progress do you love me more than prestige and more than promotion do you love me more than prominence in society and more than the praise of men do you love me more than even your hobby do you love me more than your pastime? Do you love me more than men and more than money? Do you love me more than women and more than wealth? Do you love me more than all things on earth and more than all things in life? Lovest thou me without a rival? When you really love somebody and a rival comes, if you love that somebody above the rival, there's no rival. There's nobody can, that can take the place of that person you love. You love without a rival. You love without reservation. You are not mentioning your word. You are not calculating your consecration. You love him without reservation. Anything, everything you're willing to give, you love him without regrets. There are some people that will say they love God, and then they are wondering, what did I promise I was going to do this for God? What did I promise that all my life I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this? They're looking at their consecrations and they're regretting. They will love him without reasonings. That is a reasoning. I'm using my brain. I'm calculating. If I take this step and I love him, what if this happens? What if uh, things dry up? What if I don't have any job? What if, uh, you know, I come across difficulty? Do you love me without rewards? There are some people, yes, I love the Lord. I'm going to work for the Lord. But what's my game? What's in this for me? What am I going to get? I hear that in that other church, they pay anyone that is going to be a worker in their church. They, give, they pay them. They're not on full time. They pay them. And sometimes they can give them motorcycles. Sometimes they give them a car. Sometimes they say that they are, they are so important to their church. They even build a house for them. And somebody here is now wondering, what am I going to have? When you love God, you love love him without rewards you love him without reckoning without reckoning i gave this amount the other time and i gave this amount the other time now another challenge has come and i'm reckoning reckoning lord we have to calculate now when you love god like jesus christ is demanding you love him without reckoning you love him without retiring without retiring that means you love god you are getting older and your people are challenging you now you are 60 years of age 65 years of age and we hear you're still going for morning cry and we hear you're still going for evangelism when are you going to retire from that are there not young people in your church and that over to the young people you are in the choir and then you're 60 years of age and you're still there and all the practices what are you doing well because I love the Lord well there are younger people that can you know play all those instruments why don't you hand over to them we love him without retiring what the Lord is saying is that Peter Simon Peter and he's talking to you and talking to me do you love me without a rival do you love me without reservation do you love me without regrets do you love me without reasoning do you love me without rewards? Do you love me without reckoning? Do you love me without retiring? Do you love me unconditionally? That is rainfall or sunshine, heat or cold, poverty or riches, whatever. For better, for worse, I love the Lord. I love him unconditionally. I love him uncompromisingly. He says, what's going to come into your life that you compromise your love for me? I love him unceasingly and I love him selflessly. That's why he says in Revelation chapter 2, 
Revelation chapter 2, and I'm reading from verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 2, reading from verses 4 and 5. Here he tells us in verse 4, it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Because thou hast left thy first love. I want you to remember the first day you met Christ. All your sins were for, forgiven. Peace of heart came. Rest in your soul came. And the vision for heaven, it was bubbling in your heart. And then you had the first love. And you say, I'll never leave him. I'll never forsake him. Anytime, anywhere, sunshine or rain, I'll be at the Bible study. I will serve the Lord. I'll come to the Sunday worship. If I am, even when I am sick, if I can still breathe, if I can still get up, if I'm not a kind of locked up in the hospital, I must be in the house of God. But today, now, how is it? If you are a little bit sick, you see, go to work or that condition, but now it's the house of God that will suffer. That's why Jesus is saying, I have somewhat against you that you have left your first love. He says, Remember therefore from whence thou art falling and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick out of its place except thou repent the Lord is calling us back to that first love you will come back to that first love we will all come back to that first love we're coming back to John chapter 21 John chapter 21 I'm reading from verse 15. We're now going to see point number two, the heart felt consecration with fundamental loyalty to Christ. Come to John chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 15. So when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these with agape love? heavenly love supernatural love he says unto him yea lord yes lord thou knowest that i love thee with human love thou knowest that i love thee with natural love thou knowest that i love thee with friendly love love of fellowship he says unto him feed my lambs but 16 he says to him again the second time simon son of jonas Lovest thou me? I'm talking of heavenly love. Lovest thou me? I'm talking about high level of love. Lovest thou me? I'm talking about supernatural love. Lovest thou me? I'm talking about loving me with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. When your heart is circumcised, lovest thou me? And he says, Ye Lord, that knowest that I love you. As I put all human beings together, and I see Mary, I see Martha, I see Josephine, I see Elizabeth, and I see you, I love you, humanly speaking. That's what we're saying, human love. That's why Jesus asked him again, what has Martha done for you? In line, what has done for you? What has mother, father, friend, relative done for you? much more than i have done for you he says to him again the third time simon son of jonas lovest thou me peter simon underline that me understand i am not like all those men here is me savior sanctifier baptizer in the holy ghost here is jesus lovest thou me underline that word me he is talking about the one that has gone to calvary he's talking about the one that died he's talking about the one that rose again me forget about all the men all the women you might love there is no comparison lovest thou me and peter now was getting the message he broke down he said, Lord, you know all things. You can reach the gauge of my heart. Apart from my language, apart from my utterance, you can tell how deep it is and you can tell how I feel. 
you know all things thou knowest that i love thee now he was ready i pray you'll be ready heavenly love will be in your heart supernatural love will be in your heart you know many times someone will say well love i love you i love you it's superficial it's on the surface and when something comes maybe disappointment maybe that person say i love i love i love when something happens he mistakenly says something that you don't appreciate what comes in your heart will show whether that love is supernatural or superficial sometimes we'll say i love i love i love the members of the church i love the ministers in the church i love the pastors in the church i love i love and then something happens you're not expecting that minister to say or that a member to do and then the level of love just went down because it's superficial love but when it is supernatural love no matter what happens disappointment no matter what happens they made a mistake and they said i did something i didn't do or they imply or they insinuate that um, you know i've been to a place i've never been okay okay i thought i would love them but now since they are saying that about me i don't uh, you know love them anymore you know sometimes we apply it to the church and this is the church of the lord jesus christ you came and then you were saved and then you came and you listen to our choir you listen to the preacher you listen to question and answer such the scripture and say this is my church i love this church i love this church anything that will take me away from this church let let me die before that time hold on hold on something then happens that you know you are you wanted to marry so and so and she said no i'm sorry it's not the will of god all the things you had said anything that will not make me to love uh, this church and the word of god let me die and then i know i go to heaven but now because that sister said no because that brother said no all the love is vanished away well come back to that first love i said well, well come back to that first love uh, we're not talking about you know selfish love temporary love superficial love conditional love it's a kind of love that no matter what happens i will always remember i love jesus christ somebody there i love jesus christ he is my savior i love him he is my sanctifier i love him he is my healer i love him he is my provider i love him he's the closest and the nearest person to me nothing will ever separate me from christ i love christ anybody there true love for christ is a gracious love it's the love coming from the heart and you love him with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength it is love with loyalty it is love with obedience it is love with absolute surrender i will not keep anything away from you i will not hide anything away from you i love you it is love with total submission it is love with total faithfulness it is love without pretense it is love without hypocrisy true love from a transformed heart that will tell the lord every time every day whatever the physical condition lord i love you it's covenant love it's constant love it's a love that reaches deep into the conscience lord that knowest all things that knowest that i love you matthew chapter 6 in matthew chapter 6 we're reading from verse 21 matthew chapter 6 reading from verse 21 for where your treasure is there will your heart be also where your treasure is there will your heart be also look up here for a moment this young man and this young woman just got married and as they just got married the lady maybe the lady came from america and they just came to do the marriage and the young man does not have visa yet to go to america 
and so the lady traveled back to america and the young man is still here but this young man has a treasure in that place because the husband the most handsome person in the whole universe beyond anybody in nigeria anybody in africa this uh, man knows that the treasure is over there and the uh, woman to lady knows that her treasure is over here their heart will be there they'll be talking together on the phone every time and anything he wants to do is thinking you know, if my sweetheart were here would this happen that's treasure our jesus the bridegroom of the church is now in heaven and we are now here on earth and all the people we see on earth all the things we can possess on earth there is nobody to be compared with the bridegroom with jesus christ that's where our treasure is our treasure is there our mind is there the lover of our soul is over there we're thinking about him every time we're seeing him every time we're reading about him every time and we're asking when will he come when will he come lord lord jesus come come very quickly come soon our heart is there that's the love we're talking about and when you are sanctified and when you really have this jesus like that your mind will be there abuja church i said your mind will be there look at exodus exodus chapter 21 exodus chapter 21 i'm reading here from verse 2 exodus chapter 21 we're looking at verse 2 look at it look at it verse 2 if thou buy and hebrew slave servant six years shall he serve and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing you've got a slave and you bought that slave and that slave has now come has lived with you for six years and if he came by himself he shall go out by himself if he were married then his wife shall go out with him if his master has given him a wife and she has borne him sons or daughters the wife and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out tell me by himself and why the lord wrote this for us is that before you came to christ you knew nothing you had nothing you possess nothing you are a slave of satan a slave of secret a slave of alcohol a slave of men and women that held you captive you didn't have your mind they will not allow you to be yourself they enslaved you and now jesus christ and put came and purchased you and it took you away from the bondage of alcohol and secret and the men and women that were bullies in your life that captured you and captivated you now you're being with the lord and since you came he's giving you peace of mind he's giving you joy of salvation since you came he's even giving you now an husband he's giving you now a wife he has given you children now and he's giving you the hope of heaven see you came and it now says if you say other people are free and you want to be free are you ready to go away and leave the joy behind you cannot take that with you and leave the peace of mind behind you cannot leave that uh, you cannot take that with you and the healing that has given you in your body in your soul you leave that behind and the deliverance he gave you you leave that behind look at verse 5 and if the servant shall plainly say i love my master i love my wife that he gave me i love my children that he gave me i will not go out free that's the love we're talking about that you know here is all that christ has given you since you came into the kingdom and now you say i can't live without peace i can't live without hope i can't live without joy i can't live without the provision i can't live without all this thing that christ has given me because of this i stay i stay 
I said, I stay. You will not go away from the Lord. Who else can we find? Who else can we know? Who else can we believe? Who else can we be loyal to to love us like Jesus Christ has loved us? Look at verse 6. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges, and he shall also bring him to the door and unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him. Tell me. He shall stay with him, tell me. He will abide with the master, tell me. And I will love the Lord, tell me. You will love him forever in Jesus' name. Hey, this is not word of mouth. Look at the implication. Second Samuel chapter 15. Second Samuel chapter 15. And we're reading from verse 15. Second Samuel chapter 15. Verse 15, here is the love we're talking about. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 15. And the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. That's it. That's the love. It says, I have no will of my own. I have no dream of my own. I have no direction of my own. I have no assignment of my own. I have no other loyalty to any other person. Thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my Lord the King shall appoint. That's the loyalty. That's the love we're talking about. We're coming to First Kings chapter 20. First Kings chapter 20. And I'm reading here from verse 4. First Kings chapter 20. We're looking at verse 4. And the king of Israel answered and said, My Lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. That's the love Christ is expecting. When he says, Lovest thou me more than all these? And I say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He says, Then uh, that means you are telling me I am thine. My soul, my spirit, my energy, my skill, my training, my background, my present, my future. Any sin I will ever have, I am thine and all that I have. I pray your love will be as real as that. I said your love will be as real as that. Nothing will separate you from the love of Christ. Let me say it for myself. Nothing will separate me from the love of Christ. I love him today. I'll keep on loving him tomorrow. I love him this year. I'll keep, him lo I'll keep loving him until I die. I can't hear church again. Church is no more talking. I love him now. And I will keep on loving him until I die. Until the rapture. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? You didn't need answer. Or distress? Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? Look at verse 38. For I am persuaded. Somebody there. I am persuaded. Say that again. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus my Lord you will not backslide you will not forsake the Lord you keep on loving the Lord for the rest of your life 
Point number three now, the heart warming commitment to faithful labor for Christ. Heart warming commitment to faithful labor for Christ. Look at verse 15. The end of verse 15, John 21. The end of verse 15, he says unto him, Feed my lambs. End of verse 16, he says unto him, Feed my sheep. End of verse 17, Jesus says unto him, Feed my sheep. That's the commitment he wants from us. He says, Feed my people. Only those who love Christ are called and commanded to feed God's people. You must answer that question first. Lovest thou me more than these? It is when you say, yes, Lord, you know that I love you more than every other sin, more than every other person. It is only then you have the commission. Only then you have the commitment. Only then you have the call to feed the people of God. Look at that preacher. Look at that pastor. Look at that minister. And he's always telling his congregation, if it were not for my consecration, I would not be here. I need to tell you, I would have been in that other place now. Don't you know the position I had? Don't you know the authority I had? Don't you know the position, high place I was when I was in the world? And not just because I'm a preacher now, I tell that person, can you take that chair and move it there? And he's dragging his feet. If it's in my place of work, where I command authority, if I tell you to do that, you'll not be dragging your feet. A person like that does not love God with all his heart, all his soul. He's always looking back. He's always looking at where I'm coming from. He's always looking at my title. He's always looking at my position. He's always saying that the, this church, they don't understand. They don't know what they have. And they don't know that if I were in the world now, this is what I will be and this is what I will do. Okay, if you people don't appreciate my ministry and you don't appreciate my calling, I know where I'm coming from. And the gate is still open for me and I'm still going to go there. He cannot feed the sheep. You must answer the question, lovest thou me more than these? And it is when you can answer, yes, I do, that you can feed the people of God. Those who feed the people of God are saved. They are sanctified. Sanctified by grace. They love him and they are obedient to the shepherd and bishop of their soul. It is the love in their heart that compels them. The love in their heart that constrains them. It is the love in their heart that drives them to feed the sheep of the Lord. If anyone does not know Christ, if anyone does not love the Savior, if he does not love sinners, if he does not love saints above himself, and he's always looking down at us, he's so high, he's so great, and he's always, you know, it's like a politician of a preacher, and he's always, you know, comparing this and that, he cannot serve, he cannot feed true servants who feed the church of God, must be saved from sin. And they must be sanctified in the heart. They must be saturated with scripture. They must be steadfast. They must be sincere. They must be selfless. They must be spirit-filled, purposeful, prayerful, persevering, and pure. And when they feed us, we will tell, look at that boy. Look at that girl. You saw her last year. You saw him last year. And you see the child now. You can tell the parents are feeding this, these children very well. Look at this other one. Look at that other one. He's living with some, um, some guardians. And you can tell that the fellow is not being fed very well. You can see the stature and you can see the lean 
emptiness because it's not being fed a church that is being fed you will know a preacher a pastor that prepares and he feeds the people you will know you understand about feeding in the physical and the natural if you're going to feed your household it is not just going to the kitchen you have to go somewhere get all the ingredients and you have to be very thoughtful and plan and you have to think about balanced diet you have to think about the vegetables about the fruits and about the carbohydrate about the protein you're very thoughtful feeding the household takes thought it takes plan and when you bring everything together you have to go to the kitchen and face the heat and face the preparation not feeding and then the plates you use the table you set everything has to be inviting everything has to be very good if you're feeding the church you're feeding the people of god the way you present everything and the way you prepare everything and the way you take all your ingredients from different parts of the bible and the way you put everything together structure everything together you have been preparing and then you give it to the people of god and when people the people of god are fed like that you will see it i see it on you that you are well fed i said i see it on you that you are well fed your faith is growing your love is growing your desire is growing your appreciation for the things of god is growing and the fellowship i can tell you can tell when you see somebody who is well fed i praise god for you what are you i said i praise god for you and the hand that is feeding you will never be weak in jesus name and let's come to jeremiah chapter 3 jeremiah chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 15 jeremiah chapter 3 we're looking at verse 15 and i will give them pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with what with knowledge and understanding knowledge and understanding that's the feeding jesus christ was referring to look at chapter 23 jeremiah chapter 23 and we're reading from verse 4 jeremiah chapter 23 we're reading from verse 4 and i will set up shepherds in the plural over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more when we are well fed, you will not fear anything. Because faith will grow. It says, not be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. When you are well fed, you will not lack. I said you will not lack. And everything you need, the Lord will supply. As you are being fed in Jesus' name. Uh, Isaiah chapter 30 I'm reading from verse 19 Isaiah chapter 30 verse 19 for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem thou shall weep no more somebody there thou shall weep no more he will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry when he shall hear it he will answer thee verse 20 and though the lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction yet shall he not take thy teachers nor remove the, the teacher shall not be removed into a corner anymore yes. thine eyes shall see thy teachers look up here you know we've been in school and now we're in the final class we're preparing for the final exam and it is at that time our teachers in the school say they have a conflict with the principal and they are on strike they say we're not going to teach these students anymore the students have not offended those teachers it's because of the conflict they have with the principal or maybe with the minister of education somewhere far away and because of that final class our children are in school and the teachers they say i cannot i will not come and teach and they have a meeting in their committee they say everybody if you go to teach you're a traitor and now our children are waiting what are we going to do final exam is coming our teachers are not coming the same thing for the church 
the Lord has given us pastors, he has given us preachers, and the final exam is about to come. Jesus is about to come. And he says, when you see all these things, you know that the time is at hand. And it's at that time because of administration in the church. And because of, you know, a decision making in the church. What did they take that hand? They didn't tell us. What did they go that way? They didn't tell us. Okay, now we'll strike. Ministers, pastors, preachers. Well, we'll not teach anymore. We're not happy with the overall leader. And if he doesn't come and prostrate before us, we will not teach anymore. You're punishing the members, innocent members, and you're not giving your very best because you disagree with this, disagree with that. When we're at the final class and Christ is about to come, let's all come back. I said, let's all come back and teach the church of God with everything we know and with everything we have our students in school they will not fail yeah. we're going to train those students teachers listen to me your, your children must get distinction yeah. and then the teachers in the church the preachers in the church we will teach yeah. we will preach yeah. we will counsel we will exalt and until everyone, every member of our church, they go to heaven with distinction in Jesus' name. Amen. And when the trumpet sounds, and then the saints go marching in, and then, thank God I see you there. Marching in with us. Marching in with us. The angels will stand at attention. He'll say, look at them coming. Look at them coming look at them coming where are they where are they where are they look at them coming where are they you are going to be part of that number you are being fed with the word of god and you are saying i will be there i will be there and the angels will stand at attention you'll be well fed with the love of god you'll be well fed with faith in christ you'll be well fed with conviction you'll be well fed with loyalty and when you get to heaven you're going to enter into heaven victoriously in jesus name open your mouth and tell the Lord, open your mouth and tell the Lord, I will not be left behind. I will not be left behind. I love the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. Nothing will take me away from Christ. And when that time comes, we are going to get to heaven, I will enter triumphantly. Amen. 